We want to thank you for joining us today in our service. We're excited that you're going to be with us via internet. Here at Cave Spring, we don't do church as normal. And we are excited to worship and praise and give honor to the one that gives us life and gives it to us more abundantly. So here at Cave Springs, that's how we want to worship. That's how we want to do things in everything that we do. We want to give glory and honor to him that gave us that life and that abundant life. You have no idea the great impact that you can have by sowing into this ministry. If you'll notice on the bottom of the screen, there's a website. There's a link there where you can do online giving. We want to thank you in advance for doing what God has called you to do. But we want to just rejoice with you in the opportunity just to worship together. Now, if you'd like to join us uh, in person, it's, we meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for small group, 1010 for worship, 6 o'clock uh, for Sunday night worship. And we meet as well on Wednesday night at 6.30. So many things going on during the week that, that it's just amazing what God is doing here at Cave Spring. So you come whenever you can, but we're thankful that you're joining us on the Internet. Thank you and God bless you.
morning, church. What a great day to come in the house of God this morning and truly be amazed by grace. Amen. You know, sometime in our lives, I think if we're honest with each other, you know, we we know through Romans that we have peace with God, that the eternal war between us and God is over as Christians, that we stand in the righteousness, in grace, that there's no we're no longer considered enemies of God, so we have peace with God, but then we also have the peace of God. And sometimes the peace of God, you know, that fluctuates. It comes and goes. And I think the biggest reason why it comes and goes is because we cease to be amazed by grace. Our Christian lives stop being about Jesus Christ and what he's done and becomes now more about me and what I can do for God. You know, every day, Jesus is not primarily our example. Let me, let me tell you this. Jesus is not primarily our example. Jesus is primarily, first and foremost, our righteousness, and that the righteousness of God given to us because of what Jesus Christ has done, that's where our peace is found. And so when you find the peace of God fluctuating in your life, when you feel like God isn't as present as he used to be, not so much what Jesus has done, what is what would Jesus do, but what has Jesus done? find peace in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So if you're here this morning and you don't know what it's like to have peace, real peace, be able to lay your head down at night and know that if something were to happen to you, that you would be immediately in the presence of God. I'm here to tell you this morning that we love you, that God loves you, that there's real peace that's found in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That salvation is available, light and life is available, burdens can be lifted, chains can be broken, real life. Not just meeting, just not just merely existing, but real life can be found here this morning. We love you. And welcome to Cave Spring, where we never do church as usual. We pray for God to divinely intervene and kind of mess up your plans mess up your lives for his will, his way because his plans are so much greater so much bigger than anything I could ever even dream of so welcome if you are a visitor here this morning, thank you for choosing Cave Spring to worship there should be a card in front of you take that card and fill it out put it in the offering plate at the end of service and we really, really appreciate those I want to welcome our friend Dr. Jenkins here this morning he's going to be stepping in for Brad Awesome day. For, is everybody excited about worshiping today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and just thank him for how worthy he really is of all of our praise and adoration this morning. Father God, you are certainly worthy. God, you created us with a purpose. You created us to love you, to serve you. God, we are not just meaningless beings walking around here on earth, and this is all that there is. God, yourself in everything around us. God, this morning we pray for your peace. We pray for your presence. God, send your Holy Spirit to consume this place. God, I pray that each and every person in this room would leave here different because of how you, through your will and your way, intervene with our lives. God, we pray for a divine intervention this morning. We pray for salvation. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for restoration this morning. God, we pray for repentance. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making all of this possible through Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Find someone you don't know yet this morning. Welcome them in the name of the Lord.
Praise the Lord. So glad you're here this morning. With a pure heart and pure mind, we want to worship our Lord Jesus Christ with all that we have. That's all that all that is within us. And so I just want you to continue to bless the Lord this morning.
Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. So glad that each and every one of you are here this morning. Thank you for affording us the time for me to be in revival in New Boston, Texas. That's just a little uh, west of Texarkana. So we're in northeast Texas this morning. I preached last night and I have a message again around 11 o'clock and then another one at 1.30. So you be in prayer for us as I'm preaching in revival at First Baptist Church, New Boston, Texas. We'll be continuing in prayer with y'all. We are so excited that Dr. Jenkins is going to be with you this morning and this evening. He is truly a great man of God and so thankful for him and his ministry and how he serves our association. But what a great man of God he is. He and his wife are just lovely people and we're so thankful for them. So I pray that you have a wonderful day worshiping and just give God the glory. Once again, we're thankful for a Savior who gave us life and gave it more abundantly for each and every one of us. I do, as I stand here in front of this staycation booth, I do want to talk to you about staycation for just a second. What a great opportunity we have to get out in our community and share the gospel of Jesus Christ in service, in love, and doing things for folks that need help. So I pray that you're being very prayerful about what you'll do, how you'll give, and serving on a team, whether it be as a team leader or just serving as a volunteer. We are excited about this opportunity, but we really need you. We need you to, to volunteer and be ready. So if you'd like to take part in staycation, please register. Our registration packs are here. See Jennifer. Uh, and, and just let's all get behind and get excited about what God's doing here at Cave Springs. Once again, we miss you. We wish you we were with you this morning, but we know that God is going to give you a great blessing through Dr. Jenkins today. God bless you, and you have a great day. We'll see you Wednesday. Bye-bye. I am delighted to be back at Cave Spring. What a joy and privilege this is. And I appreciate the introduction from your wonderful pastor, uh, Brad Doss. And uh, I am grateful that each of you have come this morning. Uh, someone once said that it takes 17 drops of water to keep 20 Baptists away. Now that's strange, isn't it? Uh, uh, you came this morning, and, and usually it takes about that much. It, it, that's really strange regarding the fact that we who have believed and have testified to our faith, have been baptized. We've actually been submerged in the water. But uh, we have a hard time with the rain that comes down sometimes. But you did not. You're here this morning. And I'm so glad that you are. I am honored to be here. Just thrilled to be here, to be a part of this time of worship with you. What a wonderful, Brother Jim, what a beautiful time of worship. My goodness. And that's, that's what it's all about. Joanne and I were over there thoroughly enjoying the opportunity to worship. And you are, without a doubt, one of the friendliest churches we've been in. And I've been in many churches prior to serving at First Baptist Church of Athens, where I retired from last year. Uh, we were going all across the state of Alabama, 3,200 Baptist churches in Alabama, Southern Baptist churches in Alabama, plus other brands of Baptist churches. And so we were in many, many churches. You are one of the friendliest, I can tell you, of all the Southern Baptist churches in Alabama, Cave Spring, you are a friendly church, and you are an active church. You're an active church doing great things for God, and that's exciting to me. I'm delighted to serve right now as the Interim Director of Missions for Morgan Baptist Association. We're excited about staycation. Your pastor made a wonderful announcement about that, and I hope that all of you are going to be involved in staycation. In fact, he came and talked to me about that, and something just emerged from all of that, that staycation is going to be one of the featured ministries at our first missions and ministry rally on March the 13th, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, March 13. Your pastor is going to be one of those who's sharing at that rally as we talk about Acts 1-8 ministry in Morgan County. And you folks are just laying it out there for everyone. And that's wonderful. It really is. So uh, thank you for the privilege to be here and to be a part of this time with you today, this morning and tonight. And uh, excited about partnering with you in ministering throughout Morgan County and staycation. 
and uh, looking forward to that great missions and ministry rally, when we're trusting that many other churches, as you've opened it up to them in Morgan Baptist Association, will also join you in that endeavor. Now, I want you to take your Bibles, the Word of God, and open them to the book of 2 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians. In fact, this message that I'm going to begin with you this morning, I will continue tonight. Uh, the message is too long for one service. And so uh, when I first preached this message, I said, boy, I'm just rushing right through the message. And then I decided, you know, this probably ought to be two messages. And so we're going to start this morning. We're going to continue tonight. Now, that works very well because what we're talking about are reasons to tell people about Jesus. And there are more than this that I could share with you, but I'm going to share with you today seven reasons to tell people about Jesus based on 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This morning we'll start with this. We'll go through about verse 16. We'll pick up tonight, go verses 17 through 21. We'll talk about four of those reasons this morning and three of those reasons tonight. And I trust that God's going to speak to your heart in a special way as we talk about these things. I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Everywhere we go, we tell people that they ought to be telling people about Jesus. It's really caught on in our family. Joanne and I have three children and 13 grandchildren. We have a real crowd. Those grandchildren are aged from, uh, let's see, 3 through 15 now, aren't they? 16, 15, 15, is that right? I lose count. When you've got 13, I lose count of their ages. Joanne's very good with this. She keeps up with all their birthdays. We keep the, uh, the U.S. Postal Service moving with sending birthday greetings to everybody, at least Joanne does. One of our little grandsons, we have eight grandsons, one of our little grandsons who's three years old at this time went up to someone who was a guest in their home the other day and he walked up to them, now this is a three-year-old coming up to a guest in his house, and he said, do you know Jesus? Uh, we just believe you ought to do that. And then they, they said, yes, I know Jesus. Do you go to church? And was the next question. Folks, we need to be asking people if they know Jesus Christ. I'm going to be sharing with you from this passage today reasons for you and for me to tell people about Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is so rich with meaning. This is an evangelistic passage. It's also a pastoral passage. It's an inspirational passage. But I hope also for every one of you today, and I believe many of you here at Cave Spring are already doing this, I want it to be a motivational passage for you. So I want you to bow with me in prayer. You've got your Bible ready there. Just keep it open and let's try to hold our Bibles open and let's pray over the Word and pray that the God of the Word will speak to our hearts in this time together this morning. Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence here. Lord, what a joy and delight it has been for Joanne and me to come again to Cave Spring Baptist Church. And Lord, I pray that right now I will be out of the way and that Jesus will be clearly seen. Because Lord, I very much want to share with these folks what you blazed upon my heart, and that is to tell people about Jesus. Lord, I pray that your word will truly go forth today through me, if you would see fit to do that, and touch many lives. Lord, thank you for your presence here in this place. Let your Holy Spirit be in charge of our thinking and our speaking. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to look at the passage straight through. I'm going to give you four of the reasons this morning. The first reason to tell people about Jesus is the reason of eternity. The reason of eternity. Do you realize that because every one of us are created in the image of God, every one of us have the divine stamp of eternity on our lives. We are eternal beings. Look at what the scripture says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, Paul's talking there to the Corinthian Christians about his body, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, 
which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened. He's talking about our physical lives here on earth. Not because we want to be unclothed, not because we, we want to in any way be unclothed, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. What Paul is basically saying here is he said, I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm ready right now. I'm ready. If the Lord calls for me, Paul is saying, I am ready right now. In fact, I long to go to heaven. He told the Philippian Christians the same thing. He said, I have that divine stamp of eternity on my life. Every one of you do too. You realize that already, I'm sure. We have the divine stamp of eternity on our lives. In fact, we live our lives with a foot on this earth and another foot prepared for, ready to go into heaven at any time. That's the posture for a believer. I'm living on this earth. I'm walking on this earth. That's what Paul's saying. But I'm ready. I'm ready to make that journey at any time that God calls for me. Look at the next verse, verse 5. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Isn't that amazing? The guarantee in our hearts that we have a home in heaven is the down payment of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Now, folks, that's excitement territory. Now, I know you're Baptist, but every once in a while, do you ever say amen, okay? Uh, I know that you have to kind of keep it under constraints, but dear folks, let me tell you, we who are in this body have the Holy Spirit living in us as the down payment that one day we will spend eternity with God in heaven. What an amazing thought that is. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, while we're on this earth, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Paul said, I would be very happy to be absent from this body and to be present with the Lord. Every believer in Jesus Christ has that promise. Do you realize that? Every believer in Jesus Christ has that promise that when we are absent from this body, we will be present with the Lord. This is a passage that is often used at memorial services. Have you ever been to a memorial service, a funeral service, when someone preached from this passage? It's often used. Now, I want you to notice something in the passage there. It says that, that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. But he says in verse 8, we are confident, yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now, that's the promise for a believer. But that promise is not true for a non-believer. That promise is not true for someone who does not know Jesus in a personal way. My little grandson Lincoln asked the right question to that person who was visiting in his house. Do you know Jesus? When a person does not know Jesus in a personal way, to be absent from the body is to be separated from the Lord for eternity. Now folks, that's an awful thought. That is an awful thought. To be absent from the body, for the non-believer, the one who has not come to faith in Jesus Christ, to be absent from the body is to be separated from the Lord throughout all eternity. The Bible's very clear about that. Now this morning, probably most of you, I'm sure the vast majority of you, maybe even to the 90 percentile this morning, have come to a point in your life where you turned away from sin and you turned to Jesus and you said to him, come into my life, take away my sin. I know you died on the cross. I know you were buried in a grave. I know you arose from the grave. I've heard that message. I've received that message. I've turned from sin, and I've called on you to save me. Dear Jesus, I have received you into my life. The vast majority of every person probably in this room, maybe a few though, maybe a few of you have not come to that point where you said, 
I turn my back on sin, and I turn to Jesus Christ in faith. I know what Jesus did. I know who He is, the Son of God. I know He lived that perfect life. I know He died on my behalf to pay the price for my sins. I know He arose from the grave. I know that He is alive, and I call on His name in order to be saved. You've done that, most of you who are here today. But some of you very likely may not have done that. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for the believer in Jesus Christ. To be absent from the body is to be separated from the Lord for the person who has never come to faith in Jesus Christ. And that's so important. That's the first reason for telling people about Jesus. Second reason in this passage follows. Look at what it says in verse 9. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he's done, whether good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Paul had an awesome reverence for God. And we also need to have that awesome reverence for God. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. The second reason for telling people about Jesus, is the accountability reason. First reason, eternity. Stamp of the eternal on your life. Second reason, accountability. We will all, I will, you will, every one of you. I know a few of your names, but not nearly all of your names. Every one of you individually will give account of yourselves unto God. You say, well, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, what does this say? Verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, the presence of the Holy Spirit is within us. We will not appear before the great white throne judgment, but we will appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and we will give account of ourselves unto God, and that's very, very important. We are accountable unto God. Sometimes we get the idea that we might just slip by this thing of accountability. Dear folks, we're going to give account of ourselves unto God. I suppose that if I went pew by pew today, most of you would be able to quote for me the Great Commission that is recorded in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Virtually every person in this room would probably be able to say, Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you realize that Jesus there said, I have all authority. And when someone has all authority, that means all authority. That's total authority. He's the boss. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. There is no CEO, no chief executive officer above Jesus in terms of the authority that he's been given by the Father. He has all authority and he's given you and me an assignment. Would you agree with that? He says, go and make disciples of all the nations. He says, go, make disciples of all the nations, meaning everyone. Go, tell the message. Go, help them to become fully devoted followers of me. Go, make disciples. The one who has all authority has, been given, has given us an assignment, and he assures us of something. He said, and I will be with you always while you're doing the assignment that I've given you. Now, are we pretty clear about that? All authority, given us an assignment to go and reach all with the gospel of Jesus Christ, to tell everyone about Jesus Christ, who is the only way to God. He says, you go and give this great importance in your life and then I'm going to assure you that I will be with you always, and then I will come for you. What is this thing of accountability? Dear folks, I don't believe 
we've been consistently obedient to our Lord. I don't. I believe that many of us could have done a much better job than we have done, including me, than we have done in telling people about Jesus. You know the great commandment. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you should love your neighbor as yourself. That's the great commandment. That should result, if we really love God that much, in our following through with the great commission. Our problem is a problem of obedience. As I shared with you, Joanne and I have all these grandchildren, so I have all kinds of grandchildren stories. Uh, Several years ago, we were on vacation uh, down in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. It was a wonderful time. We'd enjoyed the beach and we'd enjoyed the little play areas. We were there with our daughter and her two children. And, and so I was out with Amara. Amara is one of our granddaughters. We have five granddaughters. I was out with Amara and we were having a wonderful time. We'd gone to the pool because, you know, it's a little more challenging to be down at the, at the, at the beach water with a three-year-old. That was her age at that time. And so I was pulling her around the pool. We were having a wonderful time. At first, she was a little bit uh, concerned about it, but she was in her little floating device. You know how those little inner tube type things are. And so she began to get accustomed to it. I was pulling her in this direction and pulling her in this direction and pulling her in this direction. She was really enjoying it. In fact, she became so accustomed to it, she became very courageous and she began to give me instructions. Go this way, go that way, this way, that way. And then I pulled her this way, but she had wanted to go that way. She stared me straight in the face and she said something that I'm sure she had heard quite often from her parents. You need to learn to obey. (laughs) Now, folks, that's what we need to learn from the one who has all authority. We need to learn to obey. We need to learn to obey Him. We've sung beautiful songs about Him this morning. Oh, what a wonderful choice of, of worship songs this morning. Praising, magnifying Jesus aware, surrender to the Holy Spirit, living within our lives so that we can magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. But dear folks, we need to learn to obey. It's not confusing what He's asked us to do. He's told us to go and tell the world about Him because He is the only way to God. First reason is the eternity reason. Second reason is the accountability reason. The third reason we come to now, I want you to go a little bit further with me in the scripture. Look at verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. Now get this. The love of Christ compels us. What is Paul saying? He's saying the love of Christ in my heart, the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in my heart, His presence is a passion in me. And that passion literally overflows. It compels us to tell people about Jesus. We in Alabama have a passing affection and attention given to sports, don't we? I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, sometimes we think about it like 365 days a year. I mean, we think about sports. And, and, and all of you have probably pledged allegiance to uh, one of the two state schools that we often pledge allegiance to. Many of us go to other institutions, but we all feel like we have to pledge allegiance either to uh, the, crim- the crimson and white or the blue and the orange. Would, would you almost agree with that? Do you ever talk about those things here at Cave Spring? Some of the other churches I visit do. I mean, they... They talk about those things. Some even wear memorabilia. You may have some on the out. There's some on here here today. We talk about those things. We talk about, get this, what is important to us. We talk about what interests us. We talk about 
what involves us. Do you talk about Jesus? You see, if he's important, if, he's, if we're interested in him, if, if indeed we, he, he's important to the point that he interests us and we think about him, then the next stage we need to be involved in telling people about Jesus everywhere we are. A passion within us, a desire within us to tell men and women and boys and girls about Jesus Christ, about who He is and what He's done and what He can do for them. So often people say, well, I just don't know what to say. Oh, all you've got to say, I've said it a few times already. Who is Jesus? He's the Son of God. What has He done? He lived a perfect life. He came to this earth, lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. He was buried in the grave. He arose from the grave. He is living right now. He's at the right hand of the Father. And one day he's going to come for his children. For those who know him, he is coming back. So, who is he? The Son of God. He has done these things. He is alive right now. And those who've repented and invited him to come into their lives have eternity in heaven. That is as simple as that. Can you tell somebody about that? Can you tell somebody what I just summarized in about one minute there? Who he is, what he's done, and what he can do for them. We must tell people about Jesus. You're to be commended as a congregation. Staycation is an amazing event. I hope that it catches on throughout Alabama, throughout the Southern Baptist Convention. It's going to catch on in the Morgan Baptist Association, all through our association this year. We've been promoting it. It is a wonderful thought. It's something that is grassroots that's come from right here. Dear folks, I cannot imagine how many people you're going to be able to tell about Jesus during Staycation Week 2016. Isn't that going to be amazing? It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. But between now and then, don't wait till then. Go ahead and tell people about Jesus. And after that, tell people about Jesus. And when you have a special week like that, intensify that and tell people about Jesus Christ. Let that be the passion of your life. Some of you probably wonder, well, how old are you? Well, I'm pretty old, but I get more excited about Jesus every day. I'm more excited about Him than I've ever been in my life. And I expect that to grow until He comes for me. The Apostle Paul was the same way, and many of you, no doubt, are the same way. We come to the fourth thing, and this is the final one for this morning. And that is this. Look at verse number 15. And He, Jesus our Lord, died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. Dear folks, there is our model. Jesus has provided for us the model. He has provided for us the pattern by which we should be living our lives. And I want to urge you to follow that model completely. He did not live for himself. He came to live for you and me. He came to this earth that those who live and follow Him should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. You see, indeed, indeed, He lives within us. Indeed, He has paid the price. He is our redemption. He is our resurrection. Uh, you know the story of Jesus. You know why He came to this earth. He came in order to point us to the Father. When He came... He proclaimed the message of the kingdom of God. He came to point us to the Father so that we could go to heaven one day. He proclaimed the message of the kingdom of God, and in doing so, he pursued the mission that God had given him. Now, what are you to do? You're to point people to the Father. You are to proclaim the kingdom. You say, I can't proclaim. You can tell. Telling is proclaiming. You can share. Proclaim the kingdom and pursue the mission that God has given you. Now let me tell you something else about Jesus. He is right now, he has made a promise. And that would be the next thing. He has made a promise. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. 
Good place to say amen. Amen. And that is a marvelous, marvelous promise. But get this. The promise is made. The promise is made. What is he doing? He's preparing a place for you and me. And guess what? He is poised right now at the right hand of the Father. And you know what's going to happen one day? The Father is going to say to the Son, Son, have you ever heard that song, Midnight Cry? Son, he's going to say this one day, Son, go get my children. <laughs> Isn't that, amen, that's good. Right. Go get my children. And he's going to come for those who know him. Dear folks, he has presented the model. He did not live for himself. He died for you. He died for me. He arose for you. He arose for me. He died for mankind. He arose for mankind. He lives for us even now. He's coming for us. We're to follow that model in our lives. That's what God's called us to do. Let me come to a final thing. I told you about Amara. That was when she was three and when she told me I needed to learn to obey. So years later, she's in kindergarten, five years old, in kindergarten learning her ABCs. So one day I was at uh, Amanda's house, Amanda and Frank's house. Amanda's our daughter. And I was sitting there in this little room that they have, and little desks that they have. I decided, well, I'm going to help Amara with her ABCs. And so we began to go through the ABCs together. And I decided I'd test her out a little bit. And so we did the A and we did the B, but then we got down to the C. I said, uh, you yeah, know, I'm going to test her. And, uh, and I, 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 as I remember it, I, I began to test her and I'd say, now is that a D? No, that's a C. Okay. Is that an E? No, that's a D. I did that a few times. And then finally she said, why don't you know your ABCs? Well, folks, I think I know my ABCs, but listen to this. I want to tell you about Jesus just a little bit this morning, and we could amplify this and expand this tremendously, but I've only got just a couple of minutes left. He is the A. He is the author of life. He is the Almighty One. He is the B. He is the beautiful Savior. He is the bright and morning star. He is the blessed Redeemer. He is C, the cornerstone of our souls, and He is the chief shepherd in every way. He is the creator. He is the D. He is the day spring on high, and He is the door of the sheep. He is the E, the eternal God, and the everlasting one, and the Emmanuel. He is F, the firstborn from the dead. He is the file leader of our faith. He is the faithful one. He is the G the great shepherd of our hearts. He is the good master. He is the gracious one. He is the H, the holy one of God. He is the head of the church. He is I, the great I am, and he is the incarnation of God. He is J, he's the judge, but guess what? He's also the justifier. He is the K, he is the kinsman redeemer, and he's the king of kings, but let me tell you, he's also the Lord of lords and he's the lily of the valley and he's the light of the world the bright morning star he is the master the M master he is the mighty one he is the miracle worker he is the majestic one in every way he is the majesty who is now on high he is in the Nazarene and he has the N name that is above every name he is O not only the alpha but he's also the Omega, He's the beginning and He is the end. He is the only begotten Son of God. He is P, the physician, and He is the priest, and He is the prophet, and He is the powerful one. He is Q, the questioner, but He's also the qualifier. He is R, the redemption that is from on high, because He is the resurrection, and He is our Redeemer. He is S, the Savior of mankind, and He's the sustainer of mankind because he was the suffering servant for mankind and he suffers for us but he secures us and he saves us if we will have him to do that he is T the truth but not only is he the truth he's actually the teacher of the truth that he is the truth
truth. And He is the truest one who has ever lived on the face of this earth. He is you, the undefiled one, the unblemished Lamb of God. He is the unique one. He is the, the visible image of the invisible God. He is the victor. He is W, the way, the wonder. He is the one who was, who is, who is to come. He is the yearned for one. He is the yoke fellow. He is the Z, the zenith of God's design for man. And he is the zealot for our souls. You say, you left out the X. No, I didn't leave it out. I left it out on purpose. He is the excellent one. He is the excellent one above all. He is Jesus. And we're to tell people about Jesus. Oh, He's worthy of being told about everywhere. He's called us as this thing. He's given us the privilege of being spokespersons for Him. Others may have wanted to do it. He's given us the privilege of doing it and the power to do it and the purpose of doing it so that people can know Him like we know Him. Now let me ask you, do you tell people about Jesus? Do you tell them? Do you have a list? I have a list in my prayer list where I go through every day when I'm praying and interceding for quite a list of people now. Day by day I call their names to God. And on that list are those people that I'm praying for their salvation. Are you praying for the salvation of people? Today. Begin today to make a list. Make a list of those for whom you're praying. Make a list for the, of those for whom you will try to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to bow with me in prayer. I'm going to pray. You've listened so carefully, so attentively. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to give you an opportunity to make decisions for Christ. Those who play the instruments are going to come. Those who normally receive people, Brother Edgar or others, will be here at the front to receive you as you come this morning. I'm going to pray for you. And today, in the feebleness, don't let the feebleness of this messenger hold you back from your dealing with God and letting God deal with you. Because the most important person in this room is our Lord Himself, the Holy Spirit in this room right now. He dwells in the heart and life of every one of you who have received Him as personal Lord and Savior. And He is present in this room, bringing conviction, bringing conviction that can make a real difference in our lives if we're willing to respond to Him as we should on this day. Some of you today are saying, you know, I haven't really been telling people about Jesus. And I, I hear today, Pastor, you're saying, Preacher, you're saying it's just a, a very simple thing that I can begin to tell people who He is, what He's done, what He can do for them. Yes, you can do that. And you can tell them how to call on His name by turning from sin and turning to Him. And they can be saved. And you can make a commitment to do that this very day. We must do a better job of this than we've ever done because the time is short. So I call on you, first of all, Christians, to make that commitment to tell people about Jesus. And then if you've never received Christ this morning, I want to call on you. Don't let this service pass by. Don't even wait till tonight. Go ahead this morning. Come and take the hand of either Brother Edgar or Brother Josh and say, I want to be saved. I want to know Jesus in a personal way. This could be a day that changes everything, literally for you, in terms of life and eternity. I'm going to pray for you. And then the songs will be sung and the invitation as it normally goes forward here will go forward. And as God impresses your heart, you respond to Him. Father, have your way with us now. Lord, I pray, I pray, oh God, have your way. Have your way with every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. Lord, let me not be in any way in the way in this invitation. Let your Holy Spirit be in control. And Lord, Give courage where courage is needed and conviction where conviction is needed. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand now and would you come as we sing together?
Thank you so much for watching our program and, and we just wanted to take time with you today and and just if you've never accepted jesus christ as your personal lord and savior we wanted to give you an opportunity to do that the bible tells us that all who call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and jesus gave us an example in in john chapter 3 beginning with the 16th verse that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him or is committed to him shall have eternal life and will never die we want to ask you this morning would you be willing to accept jesus christ as your personal lord and savior would you ask him to come into your heart and forgive you of your sin and save you save you for eternity it's one of the greatest things that you'll ever do and give yourself a wonderful witness in the process so I'm going to ask you if you would pray this prayer. Just simply ask, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you save my soul? Forgive me of my sin. And then simply thank him for saving you. Would you pray that prayer? And if you've prayed that prayer, we'd love to know it. If you would just contact us, you can contact us by phone. Or you can contact us by email. Uh, if you would just uh, let us know about your decision. If you have a prayer request, we'd love to know it. We'd love to be able to pray for you. But always remember that God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord.